Hey there, we are so thankful that you have made the choice to watch one of ACC's messages online. You know, as you are watching and diving into the truths that are being shared, we challenge you. You're sitting at your phone or your computer, hop on social media and be sure to use the hashtag you belong at ACC as God is teaching you different things during this message. But you know, we say you belong at ACC and we truly mean that, which means we would love to have you join us during one, our, one of our Sunday services at 8.30, 10 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. here at 710 Aqua Heart Road. So we would love to have you jump into this message and we're believing God is gonna do some awesome things in your life today. Good afternoon, church. Merry Christmas. Let's try it again. Merry Christmas, church. Yeah, it's so awesome to see all of you here this afternoon. My name is Matt. I serve here at ACC as the lead pastor, and it's just a, it's just a real privilege to be able to celebrate this really special day, getting us all together. And I want to acknowledge something real fast. I understand that Christmas Eve is one of those, one of those days that some of you uh, maybe don't normally enjoy coming to church. Maybe uh, church isn't someplace you feel super comfortable, but you're here today maybe as a favor to someone you love. Uh, you're, you're here with mom or dad or uh, someone asked you to, to invite you to be here. I want you to know that if, if church is a place where you're not normally very comfortable, I'm really excited you're here because Arundel Christian Church, listen to this, this church is a church for people who don't like church, all right? So if that's you, if you're like, you know what, I don't really care for church too much, but someone's making me come, you are in the right place. This is a church uh, kind of for you. Uh, we love you here. You belong here. You don't have to believe like I do before you can hang out uh, and, and be amongst and, st and, and kind of figure out what we're doing here. So I'm so glad you're here. I wanted you to know that. You know, I love this whole series we're going through as we're talking about generosity because our God is a generous God. You know that, church? Our God is incredibly generous to us. And we're, we're uh, going through this process of, of imitating God. How do we uh, be generous the way God has been generous to us? And there's really no way to do that, uh, to, to avoid that around Christmas time, because it's a time we, we're generous. Let me pulse check real fast. See how ready we are as a church for Christmas. How many of you uh, need to leave from here and you still have some shopping to do today? How many of you still have some shopping yeah, proud procrastinator right here. We got some other sh late shoppers. Good for you. How many of you, uh, the shopping's done, but you have a whole lot of wrapping still to do? How many of you are like s Christmas Eve wrappers? Yeah, all right. How many of you uh, have something pretty cool that needs to be assembled? Any, anyone? Anyone putting something together? Maybe if you raise your hand, you're giving away something. All right. Me. All right. That's cool. Hey, you know, Christmas is a, is a it's time of the year where we get to be generous, where we, we can be generous all year long, but Christmas is a specific time of the year where we really celebrate generosity and we remember, right, that God was incredibly generous to us, so we, re, we kind of reflect that, we imitate Him in our generosity to others. And I think we'll all notice, uh, I have some boxes up on the stage here, some different gifts and a bag and, and whatnot. I think you're going to find that tomorrow, those of you who are opening up gifts on Christmas morning, that your gifts are going to fall into some different categories. And I have some categories here to show you. The first one, I call the good thing small box type gift. All right? So here's how a good thing small box gift works. Usually, right, when you find a box this size under the tree, it's not the one, kids, you're going to first. Am I right? 
You're going to the big monstrosity wondering what's inside there. The little box usually isn't that enticing, but sometimes we know, right, the coolest gifts we give sometimes come in really small boxes. Uh, I know the greatest gift I ever gave was to my wife before we got married. You know what I'm talking about? The whole down on one knee. This would be a really good example of a good, expensive gift in a small box, right? So we understand that kind of gift. I'm going to set that here for us to come back to. We also have what we call an overly practical gift. You know what I'm talking about, right? An overly practical gift is a gift that never makes your list, but someone gets it for you anyway because you need it, okay? So this is something you really want. Here, here's an example of an overly practical gift uh, right here. Underwear. You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> you know, Listen, underwear has never made my shopping list. Maybe it should, but it's never made it, right? Underwear is something that we need. It's practical. It's kind of like a, like a bar of soap. Or if you open up your stocking and you got yourself like some, some toothpaste in there, it's good to have toothpaste, but it's not something you really want all that much, right? Uh, here's, uh, here's another category I call a just weight gift. All right, here's what a just weight gift is. I used to get this gift from my grandfather every year at Christmas. I had a grandfather who would send me this gift, and I'll show it to you. Some of you are going to recognize it right away. It's a U.S. savings bond, okay? <laughs> so here's, so I would get the gift, I would open it up, right? And I don't know why I wouldn't learn that this was a pattern. I would see 100, and I would think, man, this is awesome, I'm rich, I have $100. And then my parents would explain it to me, and right, it was, just wait 10 years. This is yours. I'm like, wait, what? That's, that's cruel, right? You don't do that. So anyway, uh, a lot of value, real value behind that, but you just got to wait for it. It's not really that valuable quite yet. How about one of these? You guys are probably going to get a, a lot of these. This is what I call a re-gift worthy gift, okay? <laughs> By the way, before I show you this, here's a rule of thumb, okay? If you have a gift that you know immediately when you see it, this is getting re-gifted. Put like a little label on it about who gave it to you so you don't give it back to them, okay? I've done that before, not good. All right, here's a re-gift worthy event. Those of you who know me know that this is a re-gift worthy <laughs> gift, okay? Uh, yeah, Pastor Matt, not a big fan of cats, all right? I'm a dog guy. So I would open this and say, yeah, I'm giving this to someone else. Now, this is a time-sensitive re-gift, right? i got to give this quickly, or it's not very practical. But So a re-gift-worthy gift. Uh, we also have, let me find some place to put this. Uh, we also have what we call an over-the-limit over gift. An over-the-limit gift is, is one of those gifts that because you love someone so much, you're so excited about buying them a gift, that even though you have a limit that you've agreed to ahead of time, you just kind of disregard it. You know what I'm talking about. You've all done this before. I have a pretty funny story about uh, a, an over-the-limit gift. You end up with like a, a gift card that's like, let me tell you this story. When we were upstairs, when I was uh, working with the youth a couple years ago, we were having a, uh, a white elephant gift exchange. And the limit we gave all the students was bring something to the party that's $5 or less. Now, somebody didn't get that memo, I guess, and they brought a $100 Visa gift card to that party. And if you know how white elephant gift exchanges work, you open up something and, and or you can steal something from someone else. Well, guess what kept getting stolen, right? This $100 gift card was like moving all over the place until like, this is just genius. I still can't believe I didn't think of this myself. Some girl said, ooh, a $100 gift card, and she, she stole it, right? and then had to leave right then. <laughs> I have to go, my ride's here. She was gone, $100 gift card, genius. Anyway, over the limit, over the limit gift. Uh, we also have what I call a, a priceless gift. Let me show you this. Now you guys are gonna see this and probably not see it as very valuable, but to me it's priceless. So four years ago, my kids gave me this gift and it's uh, hand-drawn. There's a picture. They, they colored it. This is from my girls four years ago. And on the inside, get this, it's the top ten reasons I love you. And see, you guys knew your cue there. 
the last, last service, I had to prompt them again. I think you could do better, all right? Let's try again. And then on the inside, get this. Top 10 reasons I love you. Aww. Right? Isn't this awesome? But now listen, if there is a fire in my house, I'm going to go and collect different things that I would say fit into my priceless gift category. Now, ultimately, if this burned up and I told my homeowner's insurance about it, they're not going to really, they're going to say that's, that wasn't worth anything. But to me, it's priceless, right? I'm going to go in, I'm going to collect the things that I find are very valuable, you know, the pictures of my family and our albums and a hard drive that has some video stored on it and uh, these, these, these kind of drawings because they're priceless to me. They're not really that valuable to you. But you have your own priceless gifts. There's handmade, maybe a family heirloom, something that was really special to you and maybe not to anyone else. And these are the different types. There's probably other types of gifts. But I wanted to explain that uh, there, there's a lot of different types of gifts we can receive, but you want to know one of the worst, I think, gifts ever. And this one could be any one of these, really. It, the, the worst gift ever is the gift unopened. Because you don't really even know what's inside, and it's not very useful to you when it's sitting wrapped inside a box under a tree. Imagine for a moment that you go down under the tree tomorrow, and there's this box, and it's wrapped the coolest wrapping paper in the world. The bow is like meticulous and every little bit of it is awesome. And you look at it and you're like, man, this is the coolest package ever. I love it. Thank you so much. Like, okay, open it, right? We, we want, but the gift is inside. The gift isn't the, the box and the wrapping. But hear this. I really want to make sure you hear this. A lot of times, most, actually most of the world, believe it or not, celebrates Christmas without really any uh, kind of heart for Christ. I think we all know, there's probably many in this room, and I don't want to make anyone feel like I'm, I'm, I'm pointing you out or calling you out or anything like that. Many people celebrate Christmas without really, in a way, it's kind of like they're settling for the box. They're settling for the parties and the songs, and the cookies, and the gift exchanges, and all the stuff that we do at Christmas, they're settling for this really cool box, thinking, man, Christmas, this is awesome, and never really experiencing the greatest gift of all, which is inside the box. What is Christmas about? The word Christ in Christmas. And I want to take a moment and talk about this, the greatest gift so humor me for a moment. I know you guys probably are like, I didn't come here to hear Matt talk. I came here to sing some songs and do some cool light up wristband stuff. And um, I just want to share quickly my heart on this. If you think about it, that when we open up the box and we experience the Christ of Christmas and realize that it's really kind of the perfect combination of all the gifts that you've ever loved and all the gifts types that you can receive, Jesus is all those things. I mean, think about this for a moment. Uh, before we even, uh, let me share a verse with you. In, in Matthew 1.23, it says this, look, the virgin will conceive a child, she will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means, say it again, God with us. Emmanuel means God with with us. In other words, uh, this verse points out very clearly what's inside the box. God sent his son Jesus, and we, we call him uh, Jesus, but we also call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Jesus is the gift inside the box of Christmas. And I, I want to I show you how some of these gift types, like when we talk about a good thing in a small box, Jesus is a good thing that came in a really unexpectedly small package. Think about this for a moment. I bet a lot of people were waiting a long time for Jesus. There had been a lot of prophecy and promise of a Jesus coming, and people were, were anticipating this, this kind of saving king, this conquering king to come and fix their problems, and yet I bet there was a little bit of confusion when these wise men came with these really uh, big gifts, you know, and these really elegant uh, attire and thinking, oh, this isn't quite what we expected, a, a really great thing in a really small package. 
And we also think of, you know, the overly practical gifts. Now, I want to make sure I, I don't attribute the gift of Jesus with underwear. Uh, that would be weird, right? But the idea is underwear is something, a, a bar of soap, uh, you know, whatever it is that, that you, you know, a, a graphing calculator, right? An overly practical gift is something that maybe you need, but you don't necessarily want. And oftentimes, Jesus is just like that. Many of you in this room right now, you're thinking, I came in here today as a favor to someone, but I'll tell you, I don't really feel any sort of need or desire for Jesus in my life. But I want you to know the Bible is super clear. Whether or not he made your Christmas list, you are in desperate need of a Savior. Let me show you in Scripture. In Romans 3, Verses 20 to 22, it says, For no one can ever be made right with God by doing what the law commands. The law simply shows us how sinful we are. In other words, here's what this, here's what this is saying. The reason that God gave us the law in the Old Testament wasn't so that we would have something to, uh, uh, to, to meet. Because God knows that you are incapable. You and I, were messed up people. We're never, ever going to be able to keep the full law. We are going to make mistakes on a daily basis. And what God is saying, the reason, I've given you, uh, the reason I'm giving you the law is so that it will highlight how desperately you need me, a Savior. How desperately you need my Son, because you are not going to be able to accomplish this thing on your own. And it keeps reading. It says, uh, but now God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law. In other words, there's a, a solution to our problem without the law being the requirement. And it says, as was promised in the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago. We are made right with God, listen to this, by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. We are made right with God, not by keeping a law, not by doing the right things, not by, the, you know, holding up to some certain standard or living up to some certain standard, the Bible says you're never going to live up to the standard of perfection that is required to have a relationship with God. You desperately need a Savior. And then it, it, that verse ends, it says, and this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who you are. What is true? If you place your faith in Jesus, if you open up the box and see what the true gift of Christmas is. That you were made right with God, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done. Then we also see Jesus as a, a just weight gift. You know, we talk about this idea of a, I don't know where it went, my savings bond, it fell. Oh, it did, yeah. So we talk about Jesus being a just weight gift, you know, the thing about uh, a just weight gift, right, is it's incredibly valuable, but just not yet. So I, I think about, right, when I opened this gift up, and my parents were like, Matt, there's a lot of value in this just weight, right? Uh, I think this was happening a lot throughout the Old Testament, right? The, the Bible talks about how God made everything perfect. This is all the way back in Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 2, we screw it all up. The rest of the Old Testament is a story of how God's people are uh, essentially in need of saving and how God has a plan for redeeming us back to him. And I, I, I can't help but think about this idea of a just weight gift as we see it in scripture. Uh, God's people must have been waiting and waiting and waiting and hoping and hoping for a savior. They knew there was a problem and they knew that God had a solution, but then they were told just wait. Let me show you an example of this. In Isaiah 9, uh, it says, Nevertheless, the time of darkness and despair that you're in right now, uh, back in this day, will not go on forever. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep, deep darkness, a light will shine. Just wait. Just wait. There's something really, really awesome and valuable coming. I just, it's not here yet. Just wait. And then Isaiah 9, verse 6 gives us a little bit more detail. It says, For a child 
will be born to us. A son is given to us. A, the government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The prophet Isaiah, long before Jesus' birth, was prophesying about Jesus. He's saying at one point, somewhere in the future, Jesus is going to be born and he's going to be the one that pulls you out of this darkness. Just wait. And then Isaiah 9, 7 says this, that the passionate commitment of the Lord of heaven's armies will make this happen. Just wait. <laughs> so back then, God's people didn't have Christmas. They didn't have the birth of the answer. They didn't know the answer to this. All they knew was eventually there is a solution coming that is going, there's going to be a child born and that child is going to fix this problem of sin and brokenness. Just wait. Here's the really cool thing. You and I are celebrating the birth of a Savior that has already happened. You can just look at the calendar, right, and figure out how many years since Christ, the, in the year of our Lord. We know that we're celebrating a, a birth that has already happened. We're no longer in a time period of just waiting. You and I can open up that gift anytime we want. We don't have to just wait. The only just waiting, get this, that I have to do now, that I've given my life and trusted Jesus as my Lord and Savior I know Jesus right now is saying, Matt, I know that this world that you're in right now is, is broken and there's a lot of junk and sin. And, but man, now that you and I have a relationship and the relationship you have with my Father has been restored through me, I have some really awesome plans for you in eternity. Just wait. That's really encouraging to me. You can open up that gift, that just wait gift. You don't have to wait. I think you're probably wondering, how is Matt going to tie in a re-gift-worthy gift to Jesus? How is Matt, he just told me he doesn't want this calendar, he wants to get rid of it. Here's the cool thing. Jesus is like the coolest kind of re-gift-worthy gift. This is the kind of gift that you open up, and the moment you see it, you love it so much. And you use it, and you love it so much that you can't help but buy one for other people around you. Maybe you've had this before. Maybe you got like a really cool blender at one point and you realize that this blender can do, it can make soup, uh, which I guess exists. This blender is so cool that everyone I know needs to have one of these and you want to go out and re-gift it. Jesus is like that. When he is a part of your life, he's going to change you from the inside out and the way he changes you, the hope that he brings, the gift that he is, you're going to want to re-gift and tell other people about Jesus. Jesus is also the greatest over-the-limit gift you can ever imagine. Here's what I mean by this. There is no way you could ever afford to buy this gift for yourself. You cannot buy the gift of a restored relationship with God on your own merit. I can't. There's no, not enough money, not enough time, not enough anything in all the world. In John 3.16 a verse that many of us know. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. In other words, listen, God loved you specifically so much that he gave a gift. Not the wrapping, not the songs, not the cookies, not the, the gift exchanges, none of that. He gave Jesus. And whoever, it says, whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That is the gift inside the box right there. If you also think about it, Jesus is the greatest priceless gift you'll ever, ever experience. Those of you who have a relationship with Jesus know this. I, I want to I say this. Like when my daughters made this for me, they didn't just think of 10 nice things to say about anybody and put them on my card. They made a list of 10 things specifically about me. This card doesn't apply to any of you. You might also take people places. <laughs> but man, my girls were thinking about me when they wrote this list. 
And I want you to know that this same thing is true about your God. God had you specifically in mind when he gave the gift of Jesus. What I, what I mean by that is you can put your name in that. If everyone else was like not a, a part of the story, it, just take everyone else out of the picture. I want you to know that God had you very specifically and uniquely in mind when he sent the gift of his son because he loves you like crazy. The reason we give uh, a priceless gift, the reason we give an over-the-limit gift is God was so stinking excited and in love with you that he didn't care about limits. He didn't care about anything. He just wanted to give you something specifically for you, and it was a gift of Jesus, the Christ in Christmas. So I want to I wanna challenge you for a moment. As our... Um, worship team comes back on stage, I want to I wanna give you a thought here. Number one, God is a generous God. Number two, Jesus is the greatest gift. The most important thing I don't want anyone in this room to miss is that you need to tear into that box. I want to ask you, if you're in this room right now and you've settled for the wrapping if you've settled for the bow and you're celebrating Christmas but you don't really quite understand why, I want to ask you to recognize that God loves you and he sent his son to this earth specifically because he loves you and that the true gift of Christmas, the greatest gift of all, is Jesus. And I want to invite you to open up that box and I want to invite you to begin that relationship with him. Would you guys do me a favor and bow your heads with me? I want to ask every head in the room to bow. And just uh, close your eyes for me so I can just have a, a, a private conversation for a moment. If there's someone in this room right now where you recognize that you have settled for the wrapping of Christmas, but you've never opened up the box and given your life to Jesus, I want to ask right now, if, if that's you, would you do me a favor? Well, everyone else's heads are bowed. Just in the privacy of this moment, would you do me a favor and just look up at me and raise your hand? I want to see your hand. If you want to open up that box today, would you? I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call you out. I just, I just want to see you. Thank you. How many of you right now, you need to tear into that box? It needs to be the first thing that you do right now in this moment. You need to open up the box. If that's you, would you raise your hand? I already saw Thank you, thank you. Here, go ahead and put your uh, heads back down, your hands down. Here's what I want to ask. I want to give you an opportunity to pray a prayer out loud. But I'm going to ask everybody in this room to say the prayer out loud. Um, so that uh, for those of you who aren't ready to make this decision or you, you don't want a relationship with Jesus yet, you don't have to say this prayer out loud. But for those of you who want to make that decision right now, and for those of you who have already made a decision to follow Jesus, this will be a great opportunity for you to celebrate with those who raise their hands and to renew this commitment to Jesus this morning. So I want to invite you to pray this prayer out loud with me uh, if, if you want to have Jesus as a part of your life. The prayer goes like this. Dear Jesus, thank you for coming to this world for me. I believe God sent you here as the greatest gift. I believe you lived a perfect life, a life I couldn't live, and that you gave your life for me on the cross in my place. And on the third day, you rose again, conquering death. I ask that you forgive me of my sin. I make you the Lord of my life. Thank you, Jesus. You are the greatest gift. We all pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, uh, I want you to know, if you prayed that prayer with me for the first time, the Bible says that when you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that your life will never be the same again. That if you prayed that prayer and you meant it, 
that Jesus, that his Holy Spirit, he's now a part of your life. And one of the gifts that you get in that gift of Jesus is this incredible relationship with God and the gift of an eternal life with him after death here. And that is really exciting. I want to encourage you to, to, to maybe find me, call me if you don't have time today and let me know. I made a decision to follow Jesus. What should I do next? You know, at, uh, at ACC, we, uh, we sing as a tradition, we sing the song Silent Night on Christmas Eve. I want to invite you to, to stand with me for a moment. We're going to sing this song together. Before we do, go ahead and stand up right where you're at. Before we sing, I hope you all know that I don't really believe that night was all that silent. Uh, moms, if you've ever had a baby without an epidural, I think you know what we're talking about, all right? I'm not convinced that that night was all that silent. I think we all know what happens when a baby isn't crying, you know, after birth. You know, we smack the baby until the baby cries. There was tears that night. There was screaming that night. There was pain that night. There were animals mooing and doing all sorts of stuff that night. I don't think uh, that the whole nativity was all that silent. But I find some really cool peace in this, in this, listen to this for a moment. Imagine the baby's been born, the animals are now laying down, sleeping, Mary is exhausted, Joseph, not as exhausted for sure, but he's tired, baby Jesus is now wrapped in swaddling clothes and is sleeping in Mary's arms, and she looks down at her gifts and knows in that moment, in that silent moment, I'm holding the greatest gift of all mankind. Let's sing this song together. Well, we are so thankful for the truth that was shared in this message today. Please know that we as a staff and as a church are praying that what you have learned today, the truths that God has put deep down into your heart, will manifest themselves and grow themselves into something amazing. And as always, you can experience that with other believers, other people who are walking this walk of faith at ACC on a Sunday morning at 8.30, 10 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. As a reminder, Please remember, you belong at ACC.